Hey guys, this is part three of my series about building this collection. And as I mentioned earlier um, in the other parts, especially the first part, I talked about how I was going to be collecting uh, Chris Van Allsburg books and also uh, Caldecott and Newbery Award winners. Uh, I have made four or five acquisitions since the last book. So we'll talk about them. Um, first of all, the first two are just more Chris Van Allsburg books. Um, not of any, you know, hugely collector interest. Um, Provoditi is not too old. Um, it's one of his more recent books. Um, very easy to get. Um, signed first printing of. I want to say it was only about $50. Um, I really loved the cover artwork, but the book itself is a little boring. I, I'm, I'm not one of my favorite books of his. I actually had never read it. Um, I knew it was one of his more recent ones. Um, but that's all I knew about it. Um, another one of his I got, uh, Just a Dream. Um, a little more up my alley in terms of the story. Um, I always confuse this one in Ben's Dream. Um, uh, Ben's Dream was his second book after Garden of Abdul Ghazizi. And uh, this one is later. It's actually from 1990. Um, I don't quite remember how much it was. I want to say it was about 175 or something like that. But um, one cool thing is that the signature is a contemporary signature from the original, likely the original book signing. Um, this uh, little frontispiece piece right there was, I believe, uh, the drawing that was, one of the drawings that was for sale at the Eric Carl Museum auctions in some recent year. Um, there's another drawing from this book that I, oh, I won't I won't try to find it right now but um, I believe another original drawing from this book is going to be um, at this year's Carl uh, museum sale so um, I considered bidding on it but uh, I'm probably sure it's going to go for many thousands of dollars probably maybe more than ten thousand dollars so I don't know if I have enough of an attachment to this book. I didn't really even know it very well that I would spend that kind of money. So, um, but if you're interested, I think there's one for sale there. Um, those are both great quality copies signed. So I didn't even know these two books really. So um, I'm just kind of trying to be a little bit completist with him and kind of building my collection of, of first uh of his, but I have no particular interest in those two books. Um, the same can kind of be said for these other ones that I got, but I think you may remember I said uh, one thing I was going to do, one of the things I was going to do before almost anything else is be collecting Caldecott uh, winners. And I've been fairly picky about it. I mean, I've been searching and searching and searching and there haven't been a whole lot of, um, there haven't been a whole lot of them around to be totally honest that are actually what I want. Now, what I want are the same things that pretty much everyone wants, which is um, first printings, uh, normal trade binding, not library or reinforced or teacher bindings. Um, not price clipped, signed, preferably inscribed, preferably contemporarily uh, signed, um, and fine dust jackets. So I don't get too much more anal than that. I will still buy it if it's not a contemporary uh, inscription or if it's not inscribed. That's just what I'm looking for. Um, I, the more I collect, the more I realize that finding something that's totally flawless is 
almost impossible. So um, I really am looking for things that are as close to that as possible. So um, just to get right to the point on this one, um, it does have a flaw. But anyway, this is the Glorious Flight, um, um, and it's illustrated by the Provinsons, uh, Alice and Martin. They've had numerous... I don't know if they've won numerous times, but they definitely have a few honors, I think, besides this. Um, if this is the medal winner, and I don't remember all the years. Um, I was going to kind of write them down before I made the video, but um, I'm starting with the 80s. I want to say that this is 1983 or so, uh, the winner from 1983. Um, quick look around it. Pretty fantastic condition. I mean, for how old it is. Um, the back is pretty fantastic too. There's one little closed tear right here. Um, if you're not looking for it, you don't really notice it too much. Um, this is, like I said, from I think it's 1983, not price clipped. Um, nice contemporary inscription. I'm sorry, this is 1985, not 83. Um, I believe it's because I think this is contemporary. Although, oh, well, let me check the year. Um, well, actually, I don't know for sure. Oh, it doesn't say actually. Anyway, I think it's from 1983 or four. But beautiful inscription, beautiful condition, looks almost new. Um, kind of makes me wonder. I don't know what the issue points are for this, um, but I, I really trust the place that sold it, and I'm pretty sure that it's the first. Um, Along the same lines, um, like I said, first order of business is collecting the Caldecott winners, uh, which brings us to Arnold Lobel's Fables. I mentioned it in a recent video that it was kind of one of the ones I was looking at. Um, this is the 1981 winner, so very early in the uh, decade. Check the condition here, beautiful, perfect, really. No closed tears. Um, this uh, broad art cover is a little bit, it's, it definitely isn't fresh, um, but uh, the cover itself is the only, the only thing that has any issues. If you take the cover off, which I did, there's actually no flaws in the book at all. Um, again, not price clipped. Shows the 895 price. Uh, and this is signed by Arnold Lobel on the title page. There's actually better inscriptions of this. Um, he did a lot of signings of this book that I've seen around that have a pelican uh, drawn, and there's a pelican in the book that's one of the more famous uh, stories from it um, but still perfect I don't necessarily need a drawing um, I'd rather the book be in great condition which this is uh, the ones I saw with the pelican were not in great condition um, third one is called Hey Al uh, this is a little bit of a letdown, kind of artistically, after uh, 1986's winner, which is Polar Express that I showed in a previous video. This is the 1987 winner. Uh, Arthur Yorinks and Richard Yilski is the um, illustrator. Uh, you can see this is re really fantastic condition. Um, it's just not the greatest. It's not the most interesting 
the greatest book. Um, uh, you know, illustrations are nice, but they're not. You know, they're not going to blow anyone's mind. Um, nice little sketch, though. Not inscribed to a person, if you're into that kind of thing. Uh, signed by both um, Nagelski, who did the sketch, and the author. No year, but I imagine if it's got both of their inscriptions, it's uh, or both of their signatures, it was probably the original um, signing tour for it. Um, from the 80s. So... That's the third, and then the most recent acquisition um, that I actually just got today is uh, Blaise Sendrar's uh, Shadow. The original text, I guess, was in French. I don't really know the source that well, but Marsha Brown translated and illustrated a book um, using his text called Shadow, and this was... Uh, a winner sometime in the mid 80s um, I don't remember what year somewhere around 84 83 this has a really bold inscription on the front here from her um, not price clipped beautiful condition um, again mostly just issues with the broad art cover itself completely intact no chipping um, there's a little bit of, uh, slight bit of sunning on the boards, but that's it. So, um, I now have from the eighties winners, um, Hey Al, Shadow, Fables, The Glorious Flight, uh, and The Polar Express. So I have leads on Owl Moon, the 88 winner, and Song and Dance Man, the 89 winner. Uh, St. George and the Dragon, I believe, is 85, somewhere around there. Another one of those mid-80s years, I forget. Um, haven't been able to find a really perfect one of it, but I'm on the lookout. Same with Jumanji, as always. I'm waiting for a really perfect copy of that. Um, and then 1980 is, uh, is Oxcart Man, which um, I've found some good ones of, but uh, not perfect yet. Um, the only other interesting, kind of interesting thing to show that I've gotten is I made a big show of my uh, John Klassen collection, which I haven't been able to increase um, at all. But you can see this is a print um, by John Klassen of uh, my favorite picture from house held up by trees which is the cover but also a, um, a, a two-page spread in the book um, I hope you can tell on the camera but he signed and titled this print I would love an original but he's he doesn't really sell originals um, maybe he will someday if he's hard up for cash but anyway for now I have that so um, I'm going to take off now and I'm going to take off from the country for a little while. And when I come back, um, I have my eye on a few more things to kind of start wrapping up the eighties. Um, and then I think I'm going to maybe go back a little bit to the seventies if I can, and then start the seventies before do doing the nineties. Nineties are a lot easier to get. So, um, not quite as fun. I'm going to try to do one or two a month acquisitions. Um, I almost forgot to mention uh, my acquisition prices here, but um, I don't remember the exact amount, but all four of these were around 400 to $450 each. Um, that's a pretty common pricing for fine copies, fine signed copies from the 80s is in the 400s. You know, as you get further back, it kind of starts to go up. Um, and as you get more modern, obviously, it starts to get easier. You know, some of these illustrators, you know, they die, or as soon as they die, the the, the uh, signed copies start to go up in value more. Um, because you can't get them. Um, anyway, hopefully I'll have Al Moon and Song of Dance Man and 
maybe one or two others by the time I do the next video. And I'd really like to start working on a different decade because I'm a little bit tired of searching for these same few copies, uh, titles rather. Um, but that's it for now.